But in linked list, each element can reside at different different places in the memory and each element has a next node or a pointer to its another node or the or its neighbor nodes. So this is a property of a singly linked list that a linked list will have a start pointing to the start of the linked load linked list. It means that the start is just like a variable, okay, which will hold the memory address of the first element of the list. And that first element will keep on pointing to its neighbor. Second will point to third, third will point to fourth. This is a simple property of a linked list. Advantages and disadvantages over array, correct? So if you know about array, array, whenever you want to uh, insert an element or, or delete an element, you add element in the middle of the array. So the problem is that you'll have to traverse the array and add the element and then shift all the elements of the array. It's a time consuming operations. So linked list, it's pretty easy. It means that if you want to add a node inside the linked list, you don't need to shift the elements. You just need to connect this node in the middle with the previous node and the neighbor node. And using these pointers, we can do that and we will see soon. So the cases where there is frequent addition, deletion of elements inside the list, their linked list is efficient. Uh, so how we create a node in the linked list, right? So to do that, a first thing that we should note is a node is just like an object in JavaScript which has multiple properties. Okay, so it's like a comp so it's not like a primitive data like a number or a string, but it is a complicated data which will have two uh, two informations. One is the value and the address of the next or the neighbor node, correct? So we'll see how we write a constructor which is used to build this object, which is a complicated data. So node is a complicated data and we'll name uh, it as a constructor function. Name of it is node. It accepts a value from outside. Okay, and whenever this function will be called, right, that object which is being created out of this function can be referenced by this. So it will that object will have two properties that is called value. You will assign the value to the value which we are receiving from outside, and it is gonna have another property called as next node, which is the address of the next node that is a neighbor node. Initially, let's keep it as null. So, how to create an object in JavaScript using a constructor function? Let's see this. So we create a current node using a new keyword. Okay and we call this constructor function with a value, correct? Which is, let's say, pass it as five. Now, if you wanna log this current node, you will see the result is correct. It is an object with two properties, value and next node. This is a naive way of explaining linked list. What if I told you that I want an API which works like this? I wanna create a linked list in my application using this kind of, uh, syntax okay i created this now i want to add a node to this linked list okay which is five now i un add another node to this linked list called a six for simplicity for this video we will consider that this add function adds a node at the start of the linked list so let's start as we know this is again a call to a constructor function so we'll go and write a constructor function okay which accepts nothing as seen over here a linked list will have a property called a start, which denotes which is the starting node of the, of the linked list. So we can say that this will be pointing to the current linked list, right, which is being created. So its start will be initially null, okay? And we want this add property, correct? Which we just see right now. So we know that this add property is nothing but a function again. So we go and add and assign it a function. This is like an anonymous function because this function does not have a name. And it's a pretty popular concept in JavaScript. So you can read about it, but it's simple. So your add accepts a value, okay? And it does some job. What is that job? It will create a node, okay? And make it the start of the linked list. So let's create a node first. So we'll create, name it current node, okay? And we'll use the node function over here, which we had just created, which we have been testing right now. So we'll go and create a node and pass the value, okay? So now, once your node is ready, what we need to do? This node should become the start of the linked list. So let's do that. So your current node address should be stored in the start, okay? This dot start, because 
this is how we can reference the current link list starts right so this is nothing but pointing to the current object which is being referred okay so it's important that you read about this if you ask i can make a another video on this it's a pretty tricky but important concept so we assign the start of the link list to the current node which is expected but once let's say you have an entire link list correct now you are adding a node at the start so the start should also point to the current start of the link list correct so that's the another operation that we'll have to do and that will basically complete our implementation okay so now if you will use these apis it's meant to work okay so let's try to test it so let's just add one node to the linked list first okay and we will print linked list let's run it so okay so node is also being printed let's uh, remove it and this also let's remove it because we don't want any disturbances so now if you see the linked list only has one node okay and start is pointing to that correct which is five and next node is null now let's add another node which is six let's print it so now if you see the start of the linked list is six and six is pointing to the five which was the last uh, start of the linked list so that's it you know this is a pretty simple explanation of linked list we can also do it using classes so let's try to do that So pretty much same thing, whatever you want to do, but I'll say try to practice it in functions first because it's, uh, you'll try to learn a lot of things because it's the lower level syntax of JS. So let's say you created a class called linked list. We have an add function which accepts a value. Okay. And let's just copy this entire method because it's meant to remain same. Okay. So this is just alternative implementation using classes and we'll see, uh, we also need to have a property of this class, which is which will be called as start. Okay, so we will. So I think we can just mention it as a constructor. Okay, because every class can have a constructor in JavaScript, which will be empty, and this dot start will be null. Okay, let's remove it, and let's also come into the first one so that we are sure that it's the new one that it is working might have an issue but let's try to run it okay it looks simple so this is how you can also use a class to implement the linked list see you on the next video if you have any comments please comment in the video i can make a video on it okay so bye